Daniel, chapters 7 through 9. In the first year of Belshazzar, sovereign of Babel, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head on his bed. Then he wrote down the dream, giving a summary of the matters. Daniel spoke and said, I was looking in my vision by night and saw the four winds of the heavens stirring up the great sea. And four beasts came up from the sea, different from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I was looking until its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man and it was given a man's heart. And see another beast, a second, like a bear. And it was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said this to it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this, I looked and saw another like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads, and rule was given to it. After this, I looked in the night visions and saw a fourth beast, fearsome and burly, exceedingly strong, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and crushed and trampled down the rest with its feet, and it was different from all the beasts that were before it. It had ten horns. I was thinking about the horns, then another horn, a little one coming up among them, and three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots before it. And see, like the eyes of a man were in this horn and a mouth speaking great words. I was looking until thrones were set up and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like clean wool. His throne was flames of fire, its wheels burning fire. A stream of fire was flowing and coming forth from his presence, and a thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judge was seated, and the books were opened. I was looking. Then because of the sound of the great words which the horn was speaking, I was looking until the beast was killed and its body destroyed and given to the burning fire. And the rest of the beasts had their rule taken away. But a lengthening of life was given to them for a season and a time. I was looking in the night visions and saw one like the son of Enosh coming with the clouds of heavens, and he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, and to him was given rulership and preciousness and a reign that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His rule is an everlasting rule which shall not pass away, and his reign that which shall not be destroyed. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was pierced within my body and the visions of my head alarmed me. I drew near to one of those who stood by and asked him of the certainty of all this. And he spoke to me and made known to me the interpretation of the matters. His great beasts, which are four, are four sovereigns which rise up from the earth. Then, the set-apart ones of the Most High shall receive the rain and possess the rain forever, even forever and ever. Then I desired for certainty concerning the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, very fearsome, with teeth of iron and its nails of bronze, which devoured, crushed, and trampled down the rest with its feet and concerning the ten horns that were on its head, and of the other horn that came up, before which three fell. This horn had eyes and a mouth, which spoke great words, and whose appearance was greater than his fellows. 
I was looking, and this horn was fighting against the set-apart ones and was prevailing against them until the Ancient of Days came, and right ruling was given to the set-apart ones of the Most High. And the time came, and the set-apart ones took possession of the reign. This is what he said. The fourth beast is the fourth reign on earth, which is different from all other reigns, and it devours all the earth, tramples it down and crushes it, and the ten horns are ten sovereigns from this reign. They shall rise, and another shall rise after them, and it is different from the first ones, and it humbles three sovereigns, and it speaks words against the Most High and wears out the set-apart ones of the Most High. And it intends to change appointed times and law. And they are given into its hand for a time and times and half a time. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away its rule to cut off and to destroy until the end. And the reign and the rulership and the greatness of the reigns under all the heavens shall be given to the people, the set-apart ones of the Most High. His reign is an everlasting reign, and all rulerships shall serve and obey him. This is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly alarmed me and my color changed and I kept the matter in my heart. Chapter 8. In the third year of the reign of Belshazzar the sovereign, a vision appeared to me, Daniel, after the one that appeared to me the first time. And I looked in the vision and it came to be while I was looking that I was in the citadel of Shushan, which is in the province of Elam. And I looked in the vision, and I was by the river Ulai. And I lifted my eyes and looked, and saw a ram standing beside the river. And it had two horns, and the two horns were high, and the one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward, and northward, and southward, so that no beast could stand before him. And there was no one to deliver from his hand while he did as he pleased and he became great. And I was observing and I saw a male goat come from the west over the surface of all the earth without touching the ground. And the goat had a conspicuous horn between his eyes and he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing beside the river and ran at him in the rage of his power. And I saw him come close to the ram, and he became embittered against him and struck the ram and broke his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to withstand him, but he threw him down to the ground and trampled on him, and there was no one to deliver the ram from his hand. And that male goat became very great. But when he was strong, the large horn was broken. And in place of it, four conspicuous ones came up toward the four winds of the heavens. And from one of them came a little horn, which became exceedingly great toward the south and toward the east and toward the splendid land. And it became great up to the host of heavens, and it caused some of the host and some of the stars to fall to the earth and trampled them down. It even exalted itself as high as the prince of the host, and it took that which is continual away from him and threw down the foundation of his set-apart place. And because of transgression, an army was given over to the horn to oppose that which is continual. And it threw the truth down to the ground, and it acted and prospered. 
Then I heard a certain set-apart one speaking and another set-apart one said to that certain one who was speaking, Till when is the vision concerning that which is continual and the transgression that lays waste to make both the set-apart place and the host to be trampled underfoot? And he said to me, For two thousand three hundred nights, and then that which is set apart shall be made right. And it came to be when I, Daniel, had seen the vision that I sought understanding and see before me stood one having the appearance of a mighty man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Ulai, who called and said, Gabriel, Make this man understand the vision. And then he came near where I stood. And when he came, I feared and I fell on my face. But he said to me, Understand, son of man, for the vision is for the time of the end. And as he was speaking with me, I fell, stunned upon my face to the ground. But he touched me and made me stand up straight. And said, look, I am making known to you what shall take place in the latter time of the wrath. For at the appointed time shall be the end. The ram which you saw having two horns are the sovereigns of Media and Persia. And the male goat is the sovereign of Greece. And the large horn between its eyes is the first sovereign. And that it was broken and forced it up in its place are for rulerships arising out of that nation, but not in its power. And in the latter time of their rule, when the transgressors have filled up their measure, a sovereign, fierce of face and skilled at intrigues, shall stand up and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy incredibly and shall prosper and thrive and destroy mighty men and the set-apart people. And through his skill, he shall make deceit prosper in his hand and hold himself to be great in his heart and destroy many who are at ease and even stand against the prince of princes. Yet... Without hand, he shall be broken. And what was said in the vision of the evening and morning is truth. And hide the vision, for it is after many days. And I, Daniel, was stricken and became sick for days. Then I rose up and went about the sovereign's work. And I was amazed at the vision, but there was no understanding. Chapter 9. In the first year of Dariavesh, the son of Ahashverosh, of the seed of Medes, who was set up as sovereign over the reign of the Kastin, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, observed from the scriptures the number of the years, according to the word of Yehovah given to Jeremiah the prophet, for the completion of the wastes of Jerusalem would be 70 years. So I set my face toward Yehovah the Elohim to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed to Yehovah my Elohim and made confession and said, O Yehovah, great and awesome El, guarding the covenant and the loving commitment to those who love him and to those who guard his commands. We've sinned and done crookedness and did wrong and rebelled to turn aside from your commands and your right rulings. And we've not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our sovereigns, our heads and our fathers and to all the people of the land. O Yehovah, to you is the righteousness 
and to us the shame of face, as it is this day. To the men of Yehuda, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to all Israel, those near and those far off, in all the lands which you have driven them, because of their trespass, which they have trespassed against you. O Master, to us is the shame of face, to our sovereigns, to our heads, and to our fathers, because we've sinned against you. To Yehovah our Elohim are the compassions and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him. And we have not obeyed the voice of Yehovah our Elohim to walk in his Torah, which he set before us through his servants, the prophets. And all Israel have transgressed your Torah and turned aside so as not to obey your voice. So the curse and the oath written in the Torah of Moshe, the servant of Elohim, have been poured out on us, for we have sinned against him. And he has confirmed his words, which he spoke against us and against our rulers who judged us by bringing upon us great evil. For under all the heavens there has not been done like what was done to Jerusalem. As it is written in the Torah of Moshe, all this evil has come upon us, and we have not entreated the face of Yehovah, our Elohim, to turn back from our crookednesses and to study your truth. Hence, Yehovah has watched over the evil and has brought it upon us. For Yehovah, our Elohim, is righteous in all the works which he has done but we have not obeyed his voice. And now, O oh Yehovah, our Elohim, who brought your people out of the land of Mitzrayim with a strong hand and made yourself a name as it is this day, we have sinned. We have done wrong. O oh Yehovah, according to all your righteousness, I pray let your displeasure and your wrath be turned away from your city, Jerusalem, your set-apart mountain. For because of our sins and because of the crookedness of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people have become a reproach to all those around us. And now, our Elohim, hear the prayer of your servant and his supplications. And for the sake of Yehovah, cause your face to shine upon your set-apart place, which is laid waste. O oh, my Elohim, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our wastes and the city which is called by your name. For we do not present our supplications before you because of our righteous deeds, but because of your great compassion. O oh, Yehovah, hear. O oh, Yehovah, forgive. O oh, Yehovah, listen and act. Do not delay. For your own sake, my Elohim, for your city and your people are called by your name. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before Yehovah, my Elohim, for the set-apart mountain of my Elohim, while I was still speaking in prayer, the man, Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, came close to me in swift flight about the time of the evening offering. And he made me understand and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I have now come forth to make you wise concerning understanding. At the beginning of your supplications, a word went out, and I have come to make it known for you are greatly appreciated. So consider the word and understand the vision. Seventy weeks are decreed for your people and for your set-apart city to put an end to the transgression and to seal up sins and to cover crookedness and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up vision and profit and to anoint the most set-apart. Know then and understand 
from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah, the Prince, is seven weeks and 62 weeks. It shall be built again with streets and a trench, but in times of affliction. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off and have not. And the people of a coming prince shall destroy the city and the set-apart place. And the end of it is with a flood. And wastes are decreed and fighting until the end. And he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. And in the middle of the week, he shall put an end to slaughtering and meal offering. And on the wing of abominations, he shall lay waste, even until the complete end, and that which is decreed is poured out on the one who lays waste.